Well, how to make it in the corporate or business world. I want to give you some advice on that, basically the reality. But first, I'll give you the myth first. And the myth will make your stomach turn, actually, because what they tell you uh, is to actually over overachieve. Like if they expect you to do so much, hey, give them another 10%, 100%, stay a lot of extra hours, come in on a weekend without pay, uh, take projects home, all that type of stuff, right? That's uh, one of their things they say to do. The other thing is to do is, you know, this is actually what they say in the corporate world, which will actually, it'll all work out in the end. It'll all be fair. Um, <laughs> and what they'll say is also that you want to educate your boss. Like if you learn something and you study something and you find a new method of efficiency, you want to bring that up to his attention and you want to teach him how it works and you want to teach him all the different little things that you know to make him smarter and make him better or her better or whatever. And that will get you accelerated in promotion. The reality of the situation is not like that at all. I can tell you that right now. And, you know, everybody freaking knows this, man. Number one is there's a lot of backstabbing going on, rumor mongering, um, people freaking pulling the rug out from each other. And I, I'll tell you one thing. This is one of the reasons you shouldn't even work for a big corporation a lot of times because they'll throw you under the bus in two seconds flat. Now, I don't think I ever really worked for a big corporation. I guess the biggest corp I did work for a military. <laughs> you know, I was in the military, so, I mean, I guess that's in a corporate. That's like a corp. Well, I was in the smallest branch, you know, of the, the military, you know, the uh, stepdaughter to the uh, step stepson to the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Navy. But uh, the thing is that, you know, it's it, the reality situation is, you know, it's cutthroat. You know, when you're dealing with big corporations or anything like that, there's all kinds of cutthroat stuff. And actually, you'll always say the worst shit floats to the top. Now, a lot of people are realizing there's a lot of disparity between the wealthy and the poor in this country. And, you know, that's that's actually, it's becoming more acute. Actually, it was several years ago, the disparity between the wealthy and the poor was the worst it was in the 20s. Uh, now, it's actually the worst it ever was in the United States. So, you know, situation's getting bad. You know, the other thing is, reality is, that people do in corporate world is brown nose, man. Stick their nose up the freaking boss's butt and tell them what they want to hear and, you know, act nice and it's all a big phony act. Well, that's actually what I say is, uh, with most people, actually, to fix the whole country and to fix everything is to go back to in individual entrepreneurship and even cottage industry. Um... The other thing, the problem though with that though is there's so much excess regulation out there, it becomes very difficult to deal with all the gar garbage you got to do to comply with stuff uh, to even have a small business. That's one of your biggest problems. You know, I mean, if you have an LLC, you, you're basically at the mercy of a of a CPA because you know the you know a lot of any of the tax software that's out there is all geared for um, uh, sole proprietors, right? That's one of the things too. And, you know, you also got the OSHA safety requirements, the health care requirements, the personnel requirements, um, you know, building code requirements, insurance requirements. So, you know, the commercial liability and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's it gets ridiculous. So that's what really kind of quashes out a lot of the small businesses, too. But in the corporate world, the whole thing is all like brown nosers all over the place. Yeah, there's a lot of workers and stuff, but there's a lot of people that strive. But they're not the ones that make it to the top. That's the reality of it. And everybody knows this, man. Everybody freaking knows this shit. But, you know, if you talk to anybody on the top, how did you make it? Well, yeah, I worked hard. I uh, I did this. I put a lot of extra hours in. You know, They'll tell you bullshit. Actually, they cheated. They freaking stabbed people in the back. They brown nosed. And they were ruthless. And, you know, it was like... Uh, do as I say, don't do as I do, because if you do as I do, then I'm going to be in real shit, you know? But the problem is, when everybody's doing this stuff, brown nosing, or st stabbing people in the back, they're not working as a team. And that causes a lot of pain and suffering to overall to the unit. And, you know, uh, this even happens in the military, because I always call it the chain of ass kissers. You know, the higher up you get, the worse they are. Actually, a lot of times they're freaking in there for the direct deposit money. But, you know, that's really what the hell... And, you know, this is the other thing, the caveat. If somebody hires you for, you know, $75,000, $80,000 a year, they have to make at least that much off of you to pay you. Because not only are they paying you $75,000, $80,000 a year, but they're also um, 
you also cover in your uh, you know your FICA taxes, your Medicare taxes, the employer side, plus your benefits and everything else uh, that's involved with your employment. Plus, they got to make sure to get a margin over that. So you got to do seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars worth of easily more than like more than like double that for them to even bother with hard freaking hiring you. So if you got to figure, why are they hiring you for seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars a year, or hundred thousand, or forty thousand, or whatever they they hire you for, right? Why are they doing it? Why are they actually doing it? It's because they're making more money off of you, and you got to figure you could do that on your own. You know, so. But actually, I'm the type of person, I always did give a lot of extra, and, uh, you know, I don't want to ever work for these yo-yos, but I found out, well, you know, I did get paid good, but, you know, that was because these guys are loaded beyond beyond belief, and, you know, I understand how the game goes, you know, they, you know, it's like they do give you, but they don't give you anywhere near what you could possibly be making, you know, not working for them, but I'm the type of person, actually, I'm a giver than a, than a, than a, than a taker. So that's one of the reasons I'm actually on YouTube because I like to put out a lot of subjects that I think that are not uh, scaring people or freaking gal delving down to crazy conspiracy holes, but actually giving people real information. But you know these guys on the top, man, they don't give a shit. They play like they give a shit. They play act nice. They're into like the arts. They're into you know they might like playing golf. They might like certain sports and you know whatever. They're fans of this. They're fans of that. But it's all on their personal life. You maybe you know them as a person, they're the nicest person in the world. But for them to get that wealth, they got a hard edge. I mean a razor sharp hard edge. No messing around. So basically when you work for these people, you're just supporting the castles they work in. And you know this actually this statue right in the front with the hand with the finger, that's the perfect Illuminati symbol because basically they're all telling the rest of the freaking people to go to hell. <laughs> you don't want to work for these guys. Because that's and you know, that's that's how it is. It doesn't matter if it's an entity with a name, you know, I don't want to give any names out there, but you know, like there's, I don't know, there's tech names, there's, there's, you know, appliance names and everything else, household appliance names and things, but the reality of the situation is, you know, it isn't really an entity, it's actually just, it's all run of people, it's all run of people, you know, the corporate entity, the corporate logo, and everybody thinks, you know, somebody, somebody thinks they work for the corporation, they're not really work for the corporation. They work for somebody. And these are those people on the top. They're the biggest users in the world, man. Big time. And, you know, a lot of people realize, you know, the best way to get ahead is to just backstab the competition and brown nose the freaking people on the top. And actually that makes the corporate environment a bunch of bullshit. And, you know, it actually cuts down our competition, our competitive edge in the United States. It's a shame because if you work together as a team, uh, the corporation can be a freaking really strong thing. But, you know, you're going to have to make smaller units of people that actually have <clears throat> like-minded, righteous attitudes. And, uh, you know, you're better off working with smaller businesses if you're going to work for somebody or work with somebody or whatever the hell it is. Because I can tell you, well, actually, I was a person, I don't think I, don't think I ever worked for the, even the ones I worked for that were really, really big, um, they, were, they were family. And that was up in Josie, New York. And, uh. They were family. They actually owned the whole freaking thing, even though you think they didn't. They owned a lot of shit. Major bucks, man. Major bucks off, you know, I don't want to say. But anyway, uh, the thing is, uh, you know, that's the reality situation. And that's actually one of the reality situation that's cutting the United States, shooting the United States in the foot on competitiveness. But I can tell you one thing. China's got the same problem. <laughs> Russia's got the same problem. UK's got the same problem. Japan's got the same problem. This is human nature all over the place, man. Uh, so, just to tell you one thing, you know, how do you get ahead in the corporate world? You, you, you know, if you're one of the evil bastards that sticks people in the back uh, and uh, brown noses a lot, you're going to freaking say, Yay! I'm going to be jumping for, you know, the ladder. I'm going to be jumping the ladder all the way. But uh, if you're a stand up worker and you work hard and you're conscientious and you do an extra good job, you must well freaking have your own business. And, 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 uh, you know, that'll work out better with the customers because after a period of time, you get a reputation as doing a good job and you'll have more and more business. So, that's exactly the way, you know, it is. You know, you don't want to deal with the corporate door bullshit because you just get messed, you just get, you just get pushed in with the mess. You might make more money, but it ain't worth it. I can tell you that right now. It ain't worth it. Well, actually, I never, like I said, I personally never worked for 
like the corporation corporation. I know I wouldn't fit into that because I'm a little bit too uncouth. I usually like working for the crazy, uh, super uh, aggressive entrepreneur, you know, the ones that freaking, they're out there to freaking get as much money as possible. I, I kind of like those people. But then again, you know, the problem is they get surrounded by, well, actually I can tell you what's even worse than the uh, corporation itself is the family. The families they get surrounded by, their wives, their their in-laws, even if they're good, man, you got a whole bunch of, there's a whole mixed bag going along with that money. And, uh, you know, they got like, it's like they're the ship that makes all the freak that's cruising along, that's making the money, and they got a lot of barnacles hanging on them. Usually their offspring. <laughs> their offspring, their family, their in-laws, their wives, or all this other bullshit. But the reality of the situation is, you know, a lot of these guys on the top, you know, the, the other thing is I gotta say this too. They always play the philanthropy card. Hey, I'm given to this. I'm given to that. I'm part of this. I join this. You know, I make a speech here. And no, I mean not like even like the Bill and Hill show. You know, with the, the making speeches for three hundred for half a million, three hundred thousand or half a million dollars each. I, I'm talking about you know people even make speeches for nothing. You know, they go out there and they still talk. But it's all a game. It's all a game. It's all public image. Because basically what they really are what they really are is they're up in an ivory tower and those Illuminati icons you see out there, those monolithic uh I you know, things out there, some of them look like the penile gland, they say whatever. Basically it's the hand with the finger telling the rest of the population to go to hell. So why should you work for them? No, 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 it's a bunch of bullshit. Anyway, so just be righteous. You know, if you're a hard worker, just be righteous and uh, do your own thing. Because they will never, you know, if they hired you for, you know, six figures or more, right? It doesn't matter. They got to make six figures or more after you. You know, uh, beside out of you to hire you. Now, there's exceptions to the rule, like Chelsea Clinton. You know, she worked in, what is it, NBC? She got, what, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars basically doing nothing. And she was the queen of B of everything out there. But, you know, basically that didn't come about because of her. It was because of daddy and mommy, you know? <laughs> and if daddy and mommy didn't have a lot of clout, she wouldn't have got that either. So, you know, that's that's one, you know, I could imagine how bad it must be in that freaking deal. The Clinton clan. Oh, God. Anyway, but, yeah, they're all bullshit. They're all bullshit. They're all screwed up. They're all screwed up. So, you know, my advice to you, how to get ahead in the corporate world, if you're a real worker bee and you're really freaking conscientious and doing a good job and you want to do extra and you're really smart and you're smarter than your boss, don't educate your boss. Be his competition. <laughs> Be his competition. Screw it. I mean, that goes for anything. Anything. I don't give a shit if you're, uh, you know, you're fixing cars, you're doing plumbing, you're doing landscaping, you're trimming trees, you're paving driveways, you know. If you're working for somebody and you think they're an idiot, and, uh, you know, you think, you know, what the, you know, hey, and you think, well, what the hell, you know, if he's going to pay me this much, I could be making that much m more just doing this shit on my own. Just do the shit on your own. So if you really want to know how to make it in the corporate world, be your own boss right there that's really what it adds up to if you're a lazy freaking ass kisser and a backstabber then you might fit in the corporate world but i look at it like this that's going to leave more room for more upstarts to come about and uh knock them out of business <laughs> because you know that'll that'll bring back the united states back to where we were from square day one when you got a lot of small businesses actually running the joint you know, we can eat at corp you know, we can eat at the big corporations. And, you know, people are getting all too bent out of shape about, oh, there's not enough jobs out there. You create the jobs, man. You do them. It's a pain in the ass, it's difficult, it's a lot of work. You create the jobs. And that'll do it. <laughs>